Hey guys, so today I wanted to kind of go over the importance of registering a Google My Business profile and how to optimize it when you're opening any sort of food and beverage brand. This could mean, like you see here, our catering business. It could mean a cafe or even a drink supplier. There's specialty categories for all of these things. And if you want to be found when people search near me or, you know, just in general, going and searching in their area, you want to be popping up on Google Maps and being one of the first people to come up as closest to them. If you can't be found in Google Maps, people probably aren't going to go to you because Google Maps shows up first in searches when you're looking up any sort of business near to yourself. So how you do that is you start by getting a G Suite account with a business domain, meaning not gmail.com, but rather maybe info team or your name at, let's say, pearllemoncatering.com like we have. Business domains can set up businesses. Regular Gmails can too, but it's a little bit easier and more secure, I think, doing it this way. So, as you can see, this is what it'll look like when someone searches catering business near me, and they're going to be in London specifically, close to Marley Bone. You want everything filled out. You want to be sure you get reviews, newsfeed, and everything. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit Profile so I can show you what this looks like in Editor. Boop. So when you register, it's going to start by asking your business name. Start there. Always start there. Do not put a location in there. You will get taken down and taken down fast. Google rolled out a new update. You can no longer say Pearl Lemon Catering London. It's Pearl Lemon Catering. Your registered business name minus LTD Limited LLC, whatever it might be. Don't put that in either. It will take you down unless one of those words is a part of your name, not the ending identifying the type of business. Then you move on to categories. You can have multiple categories. Ideally, pick the best category to be your primary one. So caterer is ours. But because you can purchase supplies from us, you can set up subscriptions for things like coffee or matcha, or you can set up subscriptions for other things. You can come to us for consulting and other services. We have restaurant supplies and catering food and drink supplier as well. Because if someone needs matcha, we can supply them matcha. But caterer comes first. If you're a cafe, cafe comes first. Depending on your country, it might be a little different. But always pick the best one. If you have trouble figuring out what this is, what one might be for you, you can either drop a comment below and be sure to tag us or head to Google. Be sure to add in your country though. Because if you want coffee shop to be a primary category but your country doesn't have that, you might have to go to cafe. But I wouldn't pick internet cafe. So pick the one with the most relevance. Then you want to move on to the description. This is where you want to put your keywords in. What type of business you are, because for Pearl and Catering, this means catering. And we want London for the location. Again, it's going to help Google pick up beyond the address where you are. It's about topical relevance. So even if someone searches near me, and that's going to be what's in their immediate radius, you might still fall in line because you've made notes on what city you're in. You also want to try to describe everything in full what you do. So for this, we mentioned we do breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, special events, corporate catering, celebrations, exhibitions, conferences, anything. By picking up those keywords, when someone searches catering for a conference, exhibition, catering, those things, it's going to help pull you up. So keep that in mind. Opening date, always put in the date you open. You're going to want to match that to your business registration date or your trading date. Why should Google ever want you to re-verify their new processes? You have to upload business registration documents. 
So you need to make sure everything matches. They might unverify you, take you down, whatever, if it doesn't match. So be mindful of that. Same with an address. You're going to want to be sure the address for your business registration is where your business is going to be unless you set up your business while you were renovating or something. In those cases, change your address with whatever tax service you use, HMRC, IRS, whoever it might be. Be sure it gets updated. But then for Google, that means you're going to want to be sure bills are going to that address because if it doesn't match business registration but the name does, you can submit bills as long as they're being sent to your actual location. Another note on address, you cannot use a residential address. Um, if they pick up on that, you'll be taken down. Now, there's special cases where you might be able to do it. Like if you're an operating out of home caterer and you do allow people to come to your house for pickups and stuff, you might be able to make an exception. If they see that, you're likely going to have to talk to a support person, like actually on the phone and have them call you to explain because um, they don't really like home addresses. So be careful of that. Phone number. Always be sure it's what it needs to be. Um, if you look at that, Google will change it on you. So we're going to let it save. So it shows we got two numbers. Google doesn't like big changes. Be careful. That's why it's very important to get your address, your phone number, and your business name right the first time. You can change some of them later. Phone numbers you can always change and submit that your number changed. Address, you're going to want to be sure you click through the buttons that you change locations. But business name, if you try to change that, they might take you down. Uh, you got to be really careful. Social profiles. As you can see, this is a new option. So after this video, I'm going to go whack them into here. But you'll be able to do Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I believe they also have TikTok and they might have some others. Get them on there. It ties your profile to your social presence. So be sure to do that. Same with menu links. If you have a link on your website to a menu that's more static, you can add it in. If you have a rotating menu, um, you might want to be careful about it. I'll just leave it with that. It's always a good habit. Can we have our business location because people can come in? Service area should never be more than one hour away. You can do two hours. Do two hours if you're a heavy traffic area, but the closer the better. So if you went and I put in like, let's say Barcelona, because we would do events in Barcelona, they could take down the profile because like the relevance of the service area is Barcelona is not close. So they don't, you, you have to keep literally close. If you want to double check service areas near you, go open up another tab and go check, or go make a radius in Google Maps. Set your little circle and see what falls in it. Hours, always keep it updated. If someone reports to Google that your hours are wrong all the time, again, they could take you down temporarily and say, change them, update them, and confirm these are correct. They don't like inaccurate information. If your information's inaccurate, they tend to boot you off the platform. Special hours only as needed. And then you have more from the business. Really, it doesn't hurt to fill it all in. So we're not woman owned. Safe spaces, gender neutral bathrooms, payments we accept, service options, fill them all out, languages spoken, all that fun jazz. And then you move on to photos. Uh, it's hoping to do it. There it goes. If you have any photos, get them uploaded. Whether it's events you've done, food you've made, what your team looks like. 
because this is catering, we don't, it doesn't really ask for the inside of the store. If you were a cafe or restaurant, it would. But as you can see, we uploaded events we've done, places we've been. It showcases our skill. And if you're catering, you really want to focus on that. You see, lots of different events, lots of different names. We got some good team pics, smiling pictures, hard at work, making drinks, making food, food spreads, whatever it might be, right? The more, the merrier. Street View is auto-updated by Google itself. Ideally, every event you have, if you're catering, upload a photo. If you're a restaurant cafe, upload a photo of every menu item. There's a special place to do that. Again, you just click add photo and click through it. Food ordering, you can pair with 30, 30 third party apps. So we accept orders. Or you can link to service providers in some cases. And then a few other notes. Reviews. We do have more reviews than this. That's very interesting. Oh, because that's add to event. So it will port over reviews from around the web but then on GMB as well. And you want to do questions and answers. So definitely push any client, nicely push them to leave reviews. And have you or your team go through and ask questions and answers, things like food allergies, menu style, where you're located, what your hours are, things that might already be in the profile, but do Q&A, Google likes that. And last but not least, updates. There are tools you can use to post and auto schedule things, kind of like some companies do for Facebook and LinkedIn. Do it on Google My Business too. It shows you're an active profile with extra relevance to the industry. Do it, you won't regret it. It's well worth it. And you know, that's about it with GMB. Keep it updated. If you ever have to temporarily close, do it as soon as possible because sometimes Google takes a day to approve it. Emergencies happen. Sometimes you can't get to it that fast. But do anything you can in your power to be sure this stays nice and beautiful. The more reviews, the better. Reply to reviews. Anything you can do to make this super engaging and active. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Would love it if you subscribe to our channel and catch you in the next video.